Are you thankful to be redeemed? Amen. Somebody say amen. And I'm thankful. The reason we're redeemed is because of his grace, because of his sacrifice. And uh, I'm so thankful for the grace of Jesus. And I want to do this song to end my set, one that everyone here will know. And I want you to go ahead and worship with me, sing with me. Amazing grace, my chains are gone. Amazing grace. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. And it came to pass at the seventh time 
that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. With that, God has raised up a man in our own generation out of the sea of humanity with an uncommon ministry. A man with several spiritual gifting. He preaches the word of God with apostolic authority, prophetic power, evangelistic empowerment, pastoral preaching, transformed teaching. Join me to welcome to the pulpit the unique man of God with unquestionable and dying passionate prayer power. Our pastor, our dearly beloved pastor, Dr. Double L. Kunwe. Welcome, sir. God bless you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You must be awake tonight because something great, unprecedented, something you never saw before is coming upon your life. But let me remind you, let me remind you that God has a plan for you. The reason he touches you, one touch of the king. The reason why that touch comes upon you is so that that plan he has for you. With that touch, you become strong, healed, healthy, delivered, set free. And that touch now gets you to the point a new life is beginning. A commencement is beginning in your life. The enemy wanted to kill you. But God said, no. You will not die. And to show the enemy, he made a great mistake by coming your way. He said, all right, even the time he ordained, you will die before. He says, you will not even die now. He will add 15, 20, 25. He will add more to your life in Jesus' name. Now, the 15 years he adds to your life, what are you going to do? God will now expand the plan he had for you before. And today, I want you to relax. Whatever happens, you are going to have additional life. For long life. He will talk to me today. Me. He will touch me today. You are saved, he will still touch you. You are sanctified, he will still touch you. Because you need that extra touch that will take you places you've never been before. Listen to me now, even me, the preacher, he will touch me. And just one touch, mountains will move. Just one touch in your life, let the whole land, let them hear. And let every mountain hear that you are getting a miraculous touch tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. You are ready to touch everyone, ready to turn every life around, and ready to give us extra years to live so that the plan you have will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. As we read your words, as we hear everything you are saying, even during the message, continue to touch lives. At the time of prayer, continue to touch lives. That this congregation here and there, everywhere, online, radio, television, that 
this congregation of today worldwide will have a new touch from heaven Amen. confirmed in every life in jesus name we pray god has blessed you you can sit down today we're talking about freedom in fullness through faith in his faithfulness you see two things there even more than two faith and faithfulness faith and faithfulness why do we have faith in god because he is faithful if somebody is unfaithful if somebody is undependable whatever he says whatever promise he gives what are you going to do with that the man the woman is unfaithful i love you but he's unfaithful i will help you but he's unfaithful you cannot depend on anyone except you know that that fellow is faithful whatever he tells you whatever he promises you whatever he says he will offer the reason you believe and you have faith is because he is faithful that's why we have freedom in fullness through faith in his faithfulness he'll be faithful to every one of us look at john chapter 8 Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Understand? It says, the moment you know the truth, at the moment you hear the truth, that truth, you have faith in that truth. He said, there is no other blockage, no wall of demarcation between the first line and the second line. The first line, you shall know the truth. The second line, it will follow. It will be the consequence of the first line. And the truth shall make you free. You understand then, all you need to do is to hear the truth and to know the truth. And the moment you know that truth, what will follow automatically is that the truth shall make you free. And then in verse 36, verse 36 says, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, if the Son will come to you, that's the Son of God, that's Jesus Christ, he says, I know the bondage, I know the yoke, I know the mountain, I know the string and the shackles and the chains that tie you, but I come to you for a purpose. What you could not do for yourself, I want to do for you. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. It says, again, look at that. There is no other world. There's no other sentence. There's no other condition. There is no maybe there. It says, the first line, the Son making you free. And then it says, ye shall be free indeed. Tonight, you are free indeed. There is no wall between you and freedom tonight. There is no demarcation between you and freedom tonight. There is no contradiction. There is no condition. There is uh, nothing. Your sins in the past and your weakness in the past and your deprivation in the past and the sickness and the power of the one that held you captive all that does not matter all that does not come in now because if the son shall make you free ye shall be free indeed and our christ our savior our redeemer is a faithful christ is a faithful savior look at hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession the confession the declaration of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise you understand the faith we're having him is so solid and is so stable because he is faithful he cannot deny himself whatever he has promised whatever he has declared he 
is faithful. He doesn't waver. He doesn't shake. He doesn't change. And it is that power that he has and he has given the promise in faithfulness that's why we have faith let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering because he is faithful that promise and he's going to do it in your life tonight is going to perform that needed miracle in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at three things. One, two, three. Like we're climbing steps, want to go upstairs. You are going upstairs today. Yeah. You are climbing a step. One, two, three. And then you are there. And you are there and the healing is there. You are there. The miracle is there. You are there and the salvation is there and God has so built the staircase that each step is small enough for you to take step one and then step two and then step three and you look around my environment is new my situation is new my life is new he has made me now to have a higher blessing that I ever had before. God bless you and God make it possible in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, number one is the decree of the Father, our full salvation, for our full salvation. He's made a decree and decrees that nothing can change. And when God says yes, nobody can say no. Number one is the decree of the Father for our full salvation. Number two, the deliverance and freedom from all foul spirits foul spirits you know when we're playing uh, football on the on the field and somebody touches the ball only his legs should have touched they say foul foul and satan has been you know doing foul foul evil spirits have been doing foul foul in our lives all that foul we're going to get away tonight he doesn't, you know, he doesn't follow the rule. He doesn't listen to the master. And he doesn't look at your desire. And then he plays foul in your life. We'll stop him tonight in your life. Number three is the declaration of faith in the faithful Savior. Look at number one now. Number one is the decree of the Father for your full salvation. The decree of the Father for your full salvation. In Psalm 2, reading from verse 7, I will declare the decree. That's the Almighty God talking. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. He was talking about his only begotten son. And the only begotten son was uh, to come to this world and deliver us and save us and wash away our sin. And the previous verses, the kings of the earth, they were raging and they were saying, Why? Why is he going to sin? When the, when the angels fell, you didn't send a savior. When Lucifer fell, you didn't send a savior. And you planned a judgment, punishment on Satan, on Lucifer, and all his fallen angels. But now men have sinned, and you are sending a savior. Therefore, they were raging, but God said, whether you rage or you fume, whatever you do, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Verse 8, in verse 8, 
ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen. You know, the Jewish people, they thought they were the only one and we didn't have any, any chance and any share in that salvation. But God the Father said to God the Son, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth, uttermost parts of the earth, beyond Jerusalem. It's not only Jerusalem people alone that will be saved, and beyond the land of Israel. It's not only the land of Israel that will be saved, but all the people to the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. And the Lord asked of you, asked of you, asked of you from the Father. He said, those people far away, anywhere in the world, I'm asking of them because I died for everyone. And tonight, as we respond to that call of the Lord, you become the possession of the Lord. And Satan cannot touch you again. You belong to Christ. You belong to the King because he asked of you on the cross and he said all the price that you ought to pay he had paid everything and he said it is finished and now you can come tonight you will come look at job reading from chapter 22 verse 21 in job chapter 22 verse 21 acquaint now thyself with him don't be a stranger to him, to the Lord, to your Savior. Acquaint yourself with him. He's calling me. He wants me to be his possession. He wants to bless my life. He wants to cleanse my life. Yes, but now you've been far away. Why don't you come to him and acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Once you know him, and you touch him by faith, and he touches you by his faithfulness, you will be at peace. Salvation comes, you'll be at peace. Regeneration comes, he renews your life, he refashions your life, you will be at peace. The peace of God, the peace in salvation will come to your heart today in Jesus' name. He says, thereby good shall come unto thee good shall come unto thee all the people in the world because satan is the god of this world and is vigilant is watching any good thing on earth any good thing for eternity wanting to come to people who are out there satan lucifer he'll block that he's an unhappy man it's a sorrowful man. It's a dejected man. Because, you know, that's why those demons were saying, are you going to torment us before the time? They knew that torment was coming. And because of that, if you are going to be relieved from torment, from torture, and from eternal punishment, they are jealous of you. And they want to block the goodness of the Lord coming your way. You must understand, when you are told, come to Jesus, Jesus, raise up your hand, believe on the Lord Jesus, and then something else is whispering and saying, don't go. You're too old to raise up your hand now. You're already an old man, don't go. Or you're too young, why don't you enjoy all the wild oats of the world? Before, even if you are going to get saved, that's Satan, that's Satan. He wants to destroy your life so that good will not come to you. You will not give your life to Satan. You will respond as the Lord is calling you acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto me. Good shall come unto me. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, it says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, if thou return 
to the Almighty. That's how good will come. That's how salvation will come. That's how the peace of God will come to you. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity, transgression, sin, wrongdoing far from thy tabernacle far from thy tabernacle and good will flow into your life salvation will flow into your life and then as it goes on look at verse 27 in verse 27 it tells you there thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee when you return to the Lord, when you repent of your sin, when you say, I'll not continue in that way again now, you're free to pray because you are acquainted with him now. Because he is faithful and you have faith in his faithfulness, it says, now you can make your prayer. As you come to the Lord, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will change your life and the Lord will give you salvation, real salvation vision with eternal life he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows then all the promises you have made to the lord since he has been faithful to you you said i'll not walk in darkness again you must pay that vow i will not go with the gang anymore that's your vow you must pay that vow i will not um, take whatever does not belong to me anymore i know god will supply all my need you must fulfill that vow. look at verse 28 verse 28 thou shalt also decree a thing you remember the father makes decree we read that in some two and because you are now a child of god